Hello, welcome to Scrap Time. My name's Christine, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a painted landscape background for a tag. So these are some samples that I was doing throughout the summer and posting, and I got a lot of comments asking um, to show you how I create the backgrounds. I'll just sort of go through so you can see some of the different samples here. Now, I was creating these tags because I was painting in my art journal and I was using the tags to take the paint off my paintbrush. I wasn't actually making these tags on their own. And that's why it's taken me so long to show you. But I did a few the other day just to see making them. These are on a larger tag. I'll show you the difference. Quite a big difference here. I think this is a number five and this is the number eight. The white tags are the Dina Wakely tags and then the Manila tags are the Distress Heavyweight cardstock tags. Now because I am using acrylic paint, you can work on any tag. These tags are like from the Business Depot from Staples. So acrylic paint will work on basically any type of paper. It's not the same as when you're doing inking. So you can use many different surfaces. And so I did these just the other day to test it out. So I will show you how to create it. First thing is your paint. You want to use an acrylic paint and I like to use a heavy body paint because when we're creating it, um, we're painting right over top and sort of blocking out some of it. We, we don't want the colors to mix, we want the colors to sort of stand on their own on top. So I like a heavy, heavy body paint. The other thing is you want to get a range of tones. So we have a really dark paint, we have a light paint, then a medium paint. And so as, you, as I paint it, we're layering with different tones and that will give the background more depth. And then the other thing I do is use a variety of sizes of brushes as I'm going down. So into, oh, this one actually goes here. So as I'm painting, I start with big and I'm working my way small. So I'm going to be working on about four tags at once because you need such a little amount of paint. And then I'm going to have a tag here for the initial brushing off the excess paint. So I'm starting with my very darkest color that I've chose to use. And you only need a dab such a little bit. If you need more, you can put more on. And I'm starting with my biggest brush with the darkest color. And I'm getting the paint on there. And then this is my, my um, extra one. So I see, okay, I'm getting the brush marks. I'm good to go because I want those brush marks. So when I do it on tag number one, I am going to put some color down the side. I'm just gonna try and pick up a bit more. So I do one on the side, tag number two, I'm going to do on the side. Now, because this was such a big brush, I don't have a lot of paint, but I don't mind having that sort of softness. Tag number three, I'm working from the edge in, but I'm not going all the way over. And then if I have enough paint here, tag number four, I'm gonna go from the other side. And I'm always touching an edge because that is what sort of will ground um, your background. So even though on um, this one, you can see the difference from the first one I had strokes and this one, it's a lot of just softness. All of it works perfectly. And you want to use a dry brush, not a wet brush. So as I'm using here. So that is color number one. From the darkest color, we're now going to the lightest color. And again, I'm just putting a little dab. So that's why I like the Dina's paints is because I can get that tiniest little amount there um, without wasting a bunch of paint. And by the way, the first paint was eggplant and now I'm doing carnation. And I'm just sort of putting my brush in to pick up some of that color. And then I'm gonna go here and make sure it's not too much. I don't want, I want to be able to get those brush strokes. So this tag here, because I went there, I'm now gonna overlap it and just put some brush strokes like that. 
This one I'm going to make sure I overlap. Here I'm going to go this way. Now I'm really sort of running out of paint so I'm going to give myself just a little bit more. But as I say, typically when I'm making these, I'm just cleaning my brush off from what I was doing. And I'm gonna make sure that I touch into that other one. And then here, my brush really soaked up the paint. So a little bit more. But you can always add more paint, but it's harder to take it away. Okay, so next I'm moving on to tangerine. And I've moved down a size of brush. Now I just like to work this way. If you can do it all with the same brush, that's fine too. Oh, I'm going to just make sure, get some of that excess paint off. And then I'm painting right over top of the paint that I already have there. And you don't have to go in order, like because the other one was number one and this was number four, it doesn't matter. And I'm coming in from like the opposite sides and all that sort of stuff. And just sort of painting. I like when I can get some of those brush strokes Okay, now when I'm using a lot of pinks and reds, I like to throw in a complementary color, and in this case it's turquoise. Um, it just will add that splash. I'm moving down a brush. I'm going to go in here just to make sure. So here, I'm gonna come in here a bit. And I'm just sort of randomly doing it. Like here there's a lot of orange, so I'm going to sort of go through that, maybe up a bit. There's not too much involved. You can always add a bit more up there. Um, I'm gonna go through here. And then this one. Okay. Um, I have two colors left, so I'm going to actually reuse this brush that I was just using. So I'm gonna go here just to make sure, just rub off color. And this time I'm going in with fuchsia. So it's another sort of dark color. But now I don't want to add that much darkness to it. This is just my one I'm painting off on. So I might just add in a little. Go up for that. Um, And you can see why now you want like a heavy body because I'm painting right over top of the other colors. Okay, my last color color is magenta. I say that because I'm gonna be using a bit of white. So I went down to another brush, just make sure I paint off.
And this color will be like a bit lighter to add in a bit of like highlights. And you can even like use the side of the brush to add in just a few sort of lines. I might go back to this one. Okay, and then last, I always like to add some white. Oh, that's a lot of white. I'm using the same brush that I just used with the fuchsia. I just want a little bit and I'm sort of putting it over like some of the darker areas and then bringing it in where I came in with that fuchsia. Because we're doing this all with really um, a dry brush and not a lot of paint, your paint is drying fairly quickly. Okay, so here we are with our little landscapes. Now what I like to do is you can take a paintbrush if you want and just do a few dots if you're so inclined. And I sort of follow where some of these lines might be. I won't do the dots on all of them. And the other thing I like to do is add black. And to add black, I usually stamp. And I have some stamps I like. So this one, it's very random. And so I may stamp it like up the side and then and keep sort of stamping it off a bit and then these stamps I love so all the the stamps I used was from I got them from a store called paper plus cloth um, I featured them before and so I might I like the lines and so I might just stamp a few little lines. And there you go. From there, I can use them for um, collaging or stamping or doing backgrounds, but that's basically how I create these little landscape backgrounds. You need very little paint and they're fairly quick to do. I did four right then. So I hope you uh, try them out doing them yourself. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give our video a thumbs up and subscribe to Scrap Time Videos on YouTube. In the meantime, here are a couple other videos you might be interested in, in watching. See you next time. Bye bye.